Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to take a minute here to to talk a little bit about attendance at Bristol, at the Food City 500 today, and in general, not just Bristol. Uh, you know, a lot of people are complaining about uh, the the reason for the attendance issues at Bristol is because they reconfigured the racetrack and it's not the same Bristol people are accustomed to. Uh, which I agree, that, I mean, it's definitely not what Bristol was. Um, you know, a lot of people really liked that you gotta, you gotta wreck somebody almost to, to gain a spot, and you can call it racing if you want to call it racing, I mean, I don't mind seeing a little bit of that, and it's always exciting, you know, stuff like that, good hard racing, but I mean, some people disagree and say that having to move somebody out of the way just to pass them is not racing, so I just did, I did a little, little bit of lazy research here just to kind of show you guys something. So this is an image from the the 2005 Food City 500, uh, and as you can tell, I mean, there's not there's there's not an empty seat anywhere. Okay, uh, at this point in time, I mean, they say there was a waiting list uh, to get into the track, which I wouldn't be surprised, you know. But I mean, every single every single seat is packed. Okay, I mean, one or two somewhere, I'm not sure. But it's packed, okay? And compare it to a picture of today's race. I mean, opposite ends of the speedway over here is the, is not the same end as the picture, but you get you get you get the idea. So you look at all those empty seats just around the whole track in general. But I'm I'm focusing on three and four over there. Um and then you look at this picture from one and two and there's not an empty seat anywhere really so a lot of people say oh you know what it has it has a lot to do with uh with the racetrack and the racing's not as good now it, it's still hard to pass it, it, it might be harder to pass now at this configuration than it was uh prior or than it was at the old configuration where everybody ran the bottom then they went to this uh, this uh variable banking uh configuration the fans didn't like it so they tried to ground the top groove off to narrow the track and they failed in doing so and they actually made the top groove the pretty much the only groove that can work now the only good thing that I that, that came out of that is we saw uh slide jobs come into play you really didn't see that at at the old Bristol or the the first version of the reconfigured Bristol, so when everybody's running the top side, you see these you see everybody dive bomb to try and pass them into the corner, and we've seen a lot of wrecks because of that. So uh, back to my point, real quick. Uh, a lot of people saying you know it's the racing's not as good. Okay, so yeah, you know I that that's that's got something to do with it. I I can't argue with that. I mean I'm sure there are people that don't go to Bristol anymore who used to because they don't think the racing's good. Now I just want to show you something real quick. Uh, I want to show you tickets for the, uh, the the upcoming night race in August, the the Bass Pro Shops uh, NRA night race. And you tell me if this is unreasonable because people also say ticket prices are insane. You know, that it's too much. Tell me this is unreasonable. If it if it wants to load for me, okay. So let this load real quick. Thirty-five dollars. I don't know what's going on here, but over here, thirty-five dollars for the cheapest ticket. For thirty-five dollars, you can get into a cup race, a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race at one of the best tracks and one of the best races all year, the NRA Night Race. Thirty-five dollars. I mean, that's that's pretty good. And a hundred fifty dollars for the most expensive ticket uh, to sit you know, up high in the front stretch, okay, now, pardon me, but I think that's a pretty good deal, I mean, $35 really isn't much, you know, if you're struggling for money and you want to go see a race, and if there's a family of three or four of you, I mean, you're not, you're looking at $35 a ticket, it's like 120 bucks. that's, that's not horrible, for a, a cup race by any means, a sporting event by any means, I mean, you go to these basketball games, you know, you want to go to a, a a Golden State Warriors game and sit. Let's say you want to sit way up, upper level. Uh, I bet I guarantee you, if you want to go see a Warrior game or a Laker game, you're paying 
at least 40 50 bucks just to get in. Um, so, you know, you hear also that hotels are really bad. Um, and I found that to be crazily true. So I did a little research, uh, looking at, uh, prices, uh, in the Bristol area for the date of the NRA night race, the Bass Pro Shops night race. And this is what I found, okay? This is ridiculous. Okay. Now, you're looking at... Um, I don't know how far from the track it is, but you're looking at a uh, two-night stay. Uh, pardon me, I think that might be three-night. Friday, Saturday night. Yeah, Friday, Saturday night, you leave Sunday. $350 plus $50 in taxes and fees. Per night. Okay, that's per night. $350 plus $50 for taxes. Okay, that's $800 for one room for two adults, let alone two rooms for four or whatnot, or one room for, for four. $400 a night, okay? Now, albeit, that is, I mean, it, it is kind of close to the track, but I mean... I think this is really what's driving people away. Who can afford $350, $400 a night for a hotel? Okay. Let's just, uh, let's look a little further away from the track real quick before I let you go. Uh, let me pull up a map. Let me pull up a map here. Let me see what's around the area. I'll go a little further away. Okay. Bristol. Okay. Uh let's try it. let's let's look at Kinsport. All right, Kinsport, Tennessee hotels. Let's just, let's take a look here. Uh, uh kayak.com. Let's just go with this. Um All right, we'll check in on Friday night. And, pardon me, and we'll check out on the 21st. Let's say one room, two guests. Okay, let's search. Let's see, let's just see what they want to stay an hour from the track. Are you serious? Okay, $150, that's not horrible, but you're looking at a two-star hotel. But, are you serious? Look at this. For two nights, $1,500 with taxes and fees. That doesn't include pl somebody taking plane, you know, where you got to pay a similar price, you know, or driving, which is, uh, if you're not anywhere near the track, that's not, that's not really that cheap either. I mean, $617, $259, I mean, that's horrible. I mean, I'm not, I'm not too sure what's going on with this 617 for a two out of five star hotel. I don't know what to think about that, but I don't know how far Kingsport is from the track. Half an hour from the track. I'm guessing a lot of teams stay in that area. Maybe that is ridiculous. That is had that that is the true issue that's killing attendance. I mean, can you imagine that? You want to bring a family of four to the NRA night race, the Bristol Cup night race. You want to give them the cheapest tickets, okay? Thirty five dollars times four, that's what, a hundred and forty bucks? Okay. So hundred forty bucks. That's not bad. Oh, okay, but you need a place to stay, right? You wanna stay in Bristol, four hundred dollars a night. You want to stay half an hour away from the track? 600 to $200 a night. Folks, I think we found the real problem here. Uh, these tracks are doing what they can. NASCAR tickets are among one of the best values in sports. I truly believe that the biggest thing daunting NASCAR and other professional sports is the price to stay in the area. I mean, when it comes down to it, I feel like even if you put Bristol back where it was, you know, let's say to go to the old configuration, you might sell out the night race once or twice again. 
But I mean, people cannot.